So it was the evening of September 28th, and today's is titled, Gethsemane Leads to Calvary. Gethsemane not only shows me how to overcome fear, but how to succeed in my Christian life. In Gethsemane, Jesus prayed a prayer, not my will, but yours be done. See Luke 22, 42. On Calvary, Jesus shouted in triumph, it is finished. <clears throat> See John 19, 30. It was in Gethsemane that Jesus sowed the seeds of victory on Calvary. I will be faced with countless Calvaries, and the only way I can prepare for them is to go through Gethsemane. I must be a Gethsemane disciple. Gethsemane was not an isolated experience for Jesus. He went there as was his custom. See Luke 22, 39. Spiritually, his whole life was a Gethsemane. He was constantly facing the enemy's alternatives. He was continually deciding to do the Father's will. The more selfish a person is, the less he will experience of Gethsemane. He has no crisis, no agony, and therefore no victory. Believers who live in the atmosphere of Gethsemane constantly reap victory. Gethsemane divides disciples into three groups. Those who decide to ignore God's will, those who decide to consider God's will, and those who decide to do God's will. Victory comes only to the one who chooses to enact God's will. I can avoid Gethsemane if I choose to do so, but I cannot avoid Calvary. The tragedy is that if I avoid Gethsemane, I will be in poor condition indeed to face my Calvary. The glorious sequence of Calvary, resurrection, and ascension it starts in Gethsemane. Lord, let me say honestly, I'll go with him through the garden. Then Christ will respond by saying, To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. That's from Revelation 3.21. That's beyond amazing. That's almost beyond comprehension. And then Hebrews 13, 20 and 21 reads, Now the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will. That, that's deep. And it's very wordy. Paul just keeps going. I wish he would just put some periods in there. He has so many commas. It's just, that's just me. Lord, help me understand Paul and just deal with his long sentences. And help me deal with this author who used Gethsemane way too many times. But help me grasp the idea of what he's trying to say, which is when we spend time with you in the garden, or in the prayer closet or wherever we are ready for the calvaries that hit us so help us spend time with you not just to prepare ourselves but because you are worth it you are lovely that's why help us to appreciate you to enjoy you as well as to let you prepare us for the difficult times we ask this in jesus name amen